I thought I would start today off talking about the fact that I've done meal replacements before. I did them back when I was trying to be healthier, and I really thought that I wasn't eating enough, I wasn't eating well enough, and I, I did realize that I had some weight to lose, but more importantly for me, it was about eating, it's about getting all the micronutrients that I thought I wasn't getting, because I really hated <laughs> vegetables. And I think that's been a theme of my life, is that I've, I've never liked vegetables. So I, I had meal replacement shakes, and I took them from a company that did like a multi-level kind of scenario where you had to order them. And one of the things that I found interesting about that was, first of all, they're marketed towards weight loss and saving people time. And both of those things were things that for me were really important. Um, well, the weight loss was kind of important, but I feel like it was more saving me time. And of course, having all the, the, the rounded food according to them, the nutrients, all those nutrients. <laughs> and I think the thing that I want to just point out is how I look back on that now, and I'm actually laughing, that for some reason I felt that a shake that was made, I mean, it was vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, all these beautiful flavors made to taste delicious, but yet doesn't taste like any natural food that I would have eaten to get the micronutrients that we're talking about. I want to I acknowledge that I wasn't looking at myself or what I was doing realistically, but I also want to help everyone out there to understand that when we try to say that a processed food is equivalent to any whole food, the example that comes to mind right away that most people give equivalence to like, and will argue about you with it is vegetables versus vegetable juices. Veg thank you, vegetable juices. And people act as if the vegetable juice has the same quality, the same everything, even though it's been processed at a plant, even though it's it's sitting in a um in a can that definitely like how is it staying fresh or it's so that's the first part. Is this I want us to understand that this allows us to believe that whole foods don't have their own inherent value. Now, I'll take that a step further because we, I was using the same logic when I was talking about junk food. I was looking at junk food as, as long as it filled me up and gave me energy, that was the same as having a, a healthy snack. And again, I'm, I'm not talking about my today's standards. I'm talking about back then that I was saying a chocolate bar could be equivalent, or even, I'm not even going to go chocolate bar, a granola bar could be equivalent to a piece of fruit, could be equivalent to um, some vegetables, could be equivalent to a piece of meat even. If I just wanted a snacky portion of it, that a granola bar was a good way to go. And I feel like one of the things that we're hopefully going to be able to get out of this is realizing that I fell into this problem because number one, I don't like to cook. So therefore I let myself eat any kind of junk food. Now, so we're talking about junk food that could be a meal uh, because I didn't like to cook. I'm always in a rush. I'm hungry right now, right? I get home from work and I want to eat right now. And so again, process food or fast food became something that I said, that's fueling me. And I, I wasn't looking at the quality of that right? I wasn't looking at the ingredients. And so I had this impression in my head that junk food is harmless. Um, fast food is harmless. I wasn't paying attention to, well, what kind of oils are they frying that, that chicken burger in? Or, or what kind of, of ingredients are they, like, what's the quality of the ingredients they're putting on my pizza? I wasn't looking at that. Um, I wasn't understanding that the food that I eat builds the body that I have. And so then it, there again, I'm allowing myself to treat process the same as, right? I wasn't understanding, and this one I didn't understand until very, very recently. I did not understand that sugar is toxic and that I was slowly destroying my joints. And I had been doing it for years. I didn't know. and. 
I, I, I want us to question because, you know, when we're looking at the foods that I have on the screen right now, one, one thing I want to point out is that all four of the, of these foods, so a pizza, a burger and fries, pasta and that shake, the core is that it's carbohydrate, right? There is some protein in each of them, but the core is that it's based on carbohydrate. So when we look at that shake and we understand that the core is carbohydrate, then it really helps us to understand that the focus is not on what's going to truly, truly help our body to progress. Because what truly helps our body to progress are protein and fat sources. And although the other images that I have there have animal protein, a lot of the time those shakes might not have animal protein. So it depends on what kind of shake you take. Today is not about that, but I just want to point it out because I do think it's important for us to, to keep that in mind. <laughs> Cooking equals mess. And so I got, I used to get home and I still do get home very late. So I, I got into this habit of being able to grab something that I could microwave or, you know, have quickly because cooking equals a mess. And then if I, if I let myself cook something that I have to clean up afterwards and it's extending my day and that's like the shake became convenient. The, the, like the, the frozen dinner, it's convenient. And I want us to think about that because we're going to come back to this idea later of convenience of these foods, but I just want to point out to you how when you're not really looking at what food is supposed to do for you, then stuff like, oh, it's more convenient to eat that becomes a conversation that you're having with yourself. My, my desire to, for convenience opened the door for me to allow like companies to sell me this kind of stuff, right? Packaged foods. I had frozen foods in my freezer, um, pizzas, um, uh, pot pies, uh, lasagnas, like any kind of, you know, like, uh, what do you call those things? Wings that you can just throw them in the oven and eat them right. Like I had all kinds of processed food <laughs> in the freezer, quick things. And also, I mean, uh, cereal. I, I ate so much cereal, had cereal for supper because it's easy, it's fast. I had pasta a lot for supper because it's easy, it's fast. If I am going to cook something that is going to be just like boil some pasta, throw some sauce on it fast, easy, not really paying attention, you know, so just convenient, convenient, convenient. And I think the thing that I lost in all of this was this idea of me looking at the fact that it's not helping me to accomplish. And I didn't know that. So I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to talk a little bit about, about slim fast for a second because you know i had a con i had a few people asking me about like well specifically this company but any meal replacements any and one thing that i want to point out just because when you go to this company's website they explain to you how to do it and i just want to run through a few ideas that they have there so basically you're supposed to have two re meal replacements it can be shakes it can be smoothies or bars per day and three 100 calorie snacks and one home cooked meal. So that's the expectation if you're doing um, slim fast. And when now they have a little, you know, those little stars on the page. And if you actually read what the star says, it says when used as part of a slim fast plan. So they're talking about like if you're doing this plan, individual results will vary, of course, based on a slim fast plan, a calorie reduced diet. A reg and regular exercise and plenty of fluids. All of that stuff makes a lot of sense. And then they tell you that those who are following a doctor, okay, they want you to check with your doctor, or all the again, all doing the right things, have a health, and if you have health problems they and you want to lose more than 13.61 kilograms, which is 30 pounds, you have to see a doctor. So I agree with all of that. But then, it, and it also says that these products are for adults only. Now, I pause there. I've had people tell me, that they were put on these kind of shakes when they were children or have had their children. And so just to understand that on the company's own website, they say these products are for adults only. And you shouldn't use them if you're breast breastfeeding or if you're pregnant. Now, they're lactose free, 99 or whatever percent. And we recommend the following. Do not consume more than one slim fast meal replacement bar per day. I thought that was really interesting. I'm not sure why we can't do more than one bar per day, but that's 
stated. Don't do that. And then it says SlimFast recommends supplementing the SlimFast meal with 400 IUs of vitamin D. So again, they're letting you know that not everything that you need is in here. Do not consume any other vitamins or mineral supplements while following the SlimFast plan. So you're just missing vitamin D. And then you should consume a variety of foods from the Slim Plus meal plan. And there is a meal plan. And you should consume a banana at least once a day. And the fact that they're asking you to consume a banana, which I know bananas have potassium, but I'm wondering, like, what's the reason for that? So, but basically they're saying every day you need to eat a banana, which, and then once you've reached your goal weight, and are transitioning into weight maintenance, please follow the Canada's Food Guide. So then they, they point you back to normal eating. Okay, so I wanted to read that to you because I want to point out something. Like there's zero thought for you to do in this plan. You go in, as long as you're eating the varied, and, and they're on their website, they have a meal plan and there's several different types of meals and they give you different breakfasts, different lunch, different suppers. And the only difference I could see between the male and the female meal plan was twice men had fish. Other than that, there was no difference what I could see. They don't give you portion sizes. They don't. So there's a lot of information that's missing for me personally, if I was going to consider that a meal plan. But the thing that I thought was interesting is that they tell you how much total calorie you can have. And so as long as your day falls in the, I think, and I'm trying to remember how much it was, 1500 no, I think it was 1200 You can double check on the website because I don't remember that piece of information right now. It wasn't the point of what I wanted to say today. But as long as you're falling within that, those numbers and you're having 300 calorie snacks, they're saying, do this, you lose weight. You don't have to think, right? The meals are pre-laid out for you. Just make what we're telling you to make. Eat our desserts. Or if you're going to make your own desserts, make sure they don't go across 100 calories. So if you tell us what, if you, if you eat what we tell you to, the and idea being you're going to lose weight, but are you building your body that's healthy or are you building it on processed food? So you are going to feel the repercussions of building your body this way, because although you're drinking the shake and you're having one real meal per day in the shake, there's excess sugar, there's chemicals. And, and depending on what, I mean, we're talking about this company in the second, but depending on what shake plan you're talking about, cause I'm not, I don't care if you're doing this company, if you're doing onshore, if you're doing any of the, I don't care which one it is. There's stuff in there. And when you read the ingredient list, is it only food items that you're seeing? And I've not seen one yet that just has food items. So there's chemicals and there's sugar. And that excess sugar is causing internal damage. It's causing inflammation. It's causing metabolic issues that lead to poor health. And we do these diets and we do them. We're trying to lose weight. So we do them for as long as we're trying to lose the weight. But then the problem that I see is we don't feel good. Part one. We're tired. We're hungry a lot of the time because it's not a lot of food. It's not a lot of intake. And then our body adjusts. Like what's important for us to keep in mind is that our body does adjust to whatever energy is coming in. If I lower my energy down 250 calories per day, which is what it seems like they're aiming at with this kind of a diet, I'm going to lose two pounds per month. And after six months, my body will have recalibrated itself to the energy coming in and my weight loss will slow and possibly even stop. And now I'm hungry and I'm no longer losing weight. So I've lost six times two is 12 pounds. And so I'm 12 pounds lighter, which is terrific. But if that's not all the weight that I had intended to lose, what am I going to do? So. Do I stop there? And I feel like this is the problem that we don't get explained to us because I see a lot of people and they're doing this process and they end up doing it for long periods of time, trying to push themselves and push themselves. And then when my body recalibrates, do I diminish the amount of food? Now, just remember, I'm eating that banana. 
that they told me to eat every day, which is causing me to store energy away as fat because there's a lot of sugar in a banana. Let's also remember that half the sugar in that banana is fructose, which means my liver is being taxed every time I have that banana. That's internal damage. So I feel like there's information that if we're not really aware of what food does to our body, we could be making mistakes. Now let's compare that to three low carb meals, right? If you were eating three low carb meals with whole ingredient foods that you cook at home, you're, you're going to have more work because you need to cook this meal. But chances are, because you're cooking at home, you're going to use better quality ingredients. And because you are cooking your own meals and you're making them with good quality ingredients and you're lowering the carb count, you're going to have sustainable weight loss. Why? Because you're not going to be hungry. If I cook at home and all I focus on is lowering my carb count, I can still eat to satiation. I can eat until I'm no longer hungry. That's what eat to satiation means. Not till I'm full, no longer hungry. And by doing that, I am not going to be A, chasing carbs because I've taken that part of the story away. I'm B, going to have eaten enough energy that my body can do all the processes that it wants to do, which means that C, my body's going to be able to do any internal cleanup and repair that it needs to do. And I'm also going to have energy because I fueled my body with hopefully healthy fats. As if you're making your own meals and you're choosing your own ingredients, I encourage you to choose the healthy fats. Doing that on a regular basis also keeps my insulin low, which means I'm not in fat storage mode as often, right? I want us to think about what we think we are saving by having less calories. We think we are putting ourselves in a weight loss scenario, but in fact, and especially on those, those, I'm going to go back to those shakes again for a second. When I was drinking those shakes, one thing that I remembered is that I always, if I had two of the shakes in a day, I always felt like by the time supper came around, like I was missing chewing. And it's such a silly thing, but we don't think about the fact that when we are eating, we are chewing. And it's something that we're used to doing. It's a, it's something that, right? It's part of eating. And all of a sudden, I've taken that away from myself twice a day that I'm not chewing. And I know I've seen it again with myself, like when I fast, like by the time I've done a few days of fasting and I'm only drinking water and coffee and water and coffee, by the time I get back to the point where I'm eating, I'm enjoying chewing my food. So when we think about what we're saving by having less calories, so we're saving some calories and therefore we think we're going to have this amazing weight loss, which Evidence after evidence after evidence shows us that's not what happens. Versus eating a healthy meal, having the right amount of energy come in, having the right type of energy come in, so fat, having protein come in so I can build and repair and, and, and do the things that makes my body strong. I get health. And when my health is good, my body regulates my weight. And why does that happen? Because when my health is good and my body isn't, my body isn't inflamed all the time, then my body is actually able, rather than focusing on trying to use up the sugar that I'm eating unnecessarily, and it being it deploying all kinds of inflammasomes and things that don't need to be deployed, but there's excess sugar and my body's confused, I'm able to have a healthier body state. Illness is not convenient. And I, I really want us to put this in our mind. Illness is not convenient. I'm trying to make my life easy by doing what's faster, but I'm putting my, I'm trying to be convenient and I'm having illness. Illness is not convenient. I want us all to do better, Wellness Warrior. I want you to be able to look at what you're going to eat and make a good decision about, is that healthy? Yes or no. 
And then if it's healthy, eat to satiation so that we can stop chasing carbohydrates. Stop chasing these, these negatives that are causing us to be unhealthy with our weight. Our um, comment of the day is coming from Sing It. So, ooh wee, the money I've spent, the shakes I've consumed in my lifetime, knowing in the back of my mind that I would gain the weight back once I've ate pizza again, but was cleverly caught up in the trusted propaganda, the seemingly only option of insanity that only fed my wishful thinking. Glad to be off the merry-go-round. Great video. What I want to point out is that when you're on their website, they are absolutely telling you that you're going to be on the merry-go-round because they say when you go to maintenance, they don't continue to say, you know, you're going to do this with our shakes or our foods or whatever. And now this is maintenance. When you go to maintenance, you go back to eating standard Canadian, American, whatever your standard diet is. That means you go back to putting the weight back on. Bonus words. If you choose a healthy, low carb way of eating, whether it be keto, carnivore, whichever one makes you the happiest, and you learn how to prepare food that you find delicious, and then you eat that food and lose weight, and you lose weight because you're eating to satiation, so you're not hungry, you're not starving yourself. You lose weight because you stop eating the carbohydrates that were causing internal damage. So I'm no longer causing internal damage. So that means that my body is no longer fighting with me. So then if my body is no longer fighting with me and it is able to clean up the problems that were happening inside, it opens the door for me now to be back to my normal weight. Why? Because when you eat healthy foods that are low in carbohydrate, and you're no longer chasing carbohydrate, right away, your body isn't storing sugar of any kind away as fat anymore. No need to, you're not overeating it, part one. But then part two, when you need energy, rather than constantly pushing you to eat something, because that's what happens when we are carb focused, I'm my body is actually able to just say, oh, we need energy, take some out of fat storage. <clears throat> as soon as your body starts taking energy, out of fat storage, your weight starts to go down. And this is part of the story that they don't talk to you about. And they don't talk to you about that because that's something that if we knew that the answer was to stop eating sugar, how would they make money selling us shakes? Right? Like that, that just wouldn't work. And they want you to buy the shakes. They want you to well, they want you to. Obviously, if you do buy the shakes, then you're going to be giving money to that company forever. I love making these videos for you guys. Thanks for watching Mind Blowing Mondays. I'll talk to you guys again next week.